And, um, you know, trying to dig in a bit more to the people in the area, I was fascinated earlier, you mentioned the likelihood of Greek communities kind of springing up in the region is, you know, when I think of Judea and Jerusalem in this time frame, and probably what most of my listeners would think about is that it is, it is a place that is exclusively kind of culturally Jewish or, or that type or ethnically, if there's, if there's, I mean, if there's even really a way to say that didn't really exist at the time, as I understand it. But do we have an idea, you know, is this a multicultural, multi-ethnic place? Or is this seem to be mostly exclusive um, Jewish people? This is a question that can be answered very quickly and, and, and then not at all. So on the one hand, it is definitely, uh, uh, it's both. And, and that, so that's a quick answer. And the other one is the more complicated. Um, so the topography of the Judean hilllands is that the, 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 the landscape we're talking about is very small in terms of kilometer wise, right? Yeah. Um, you, you have this sanctuary in this city called uh, Jerusalem, uh, which when we think about it, looks very different than the Ju uh, Jerusalem we think about nowadays, because even the old city wall, uh, uh, the medieval old city wall is not how the ancient second century BCE city would have looked like. So the city would have looked, the layout would have looked very, very different. But just, you know, uh, uh, a few kilometers, I mean, not a few, but but within a good hour's modern day drive, you're in Samaria, where there is another big temple. Uh, it's a Judean community that has sacrifices that uh, also believes in the, well, the question is whether it's the same God or it's a different God, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in a type of the same God. Um, and then you have a community just about an hour modern day's drive to the south. Uh, uh, in Idumea, uh, ancient biblical Edom, uh, where Edomians live and their divinity cause has, has very many similarities with uh, uh, the Jewish God, but there's also clearly some differences. It has a different name, for example. Within this, we also have some communities that appear to be more multicultural than others. Uh, so Samaria, there seem to be a lot of farmsteads that demonstrate evidence of Greek cultural influence. Are those Greek colonists? Some of them probably are. Are these wealthy Samarian farmers that adopt the trappings of the imperial family or they buy this sorts of thing uh, because they find it attractive? Is is almost impossible to tell, but we shouldn't exclude one or the other, right? Also in Idumea, um, Idumea is a melting pot of different cultures in the third century and early second century. And uh, it's a very fertile valley going towards the, towards the southern tip of the Dead Sea. Uh, and the city of Maresha, destroyed in the late second century, was a melting pot. You have Phoenicians living there, Edomians living there, Judeans living there, Greeks living there, and they all leave their inscriptions. Oh, wow. Jerusalem itself, uh, we have far less evidence for that. We can see that uh, it's a largely a Judean city and a lot of the inner city seems to be located on uh, centered around the Temple Mount. Mm -hmm. um, but we also see we have Greek official buildings, which might be some, some Ptolemaic administrator. So there are clearly some, some Ptolemaic things there. And we also have clearly some cultural uh, uh, adaptations. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, when we talk about this story in 1 and 2 Maccabees about the gymnasium, we have a group of Judeans in Jerusalem at the seat of the temple council, the Sanhedrin, who want to turn Jerusalem into a polis. That's the accusation the Maccabees do, get, do against them. But it is quite likely that, that really that the idea of these individual there's a high priest named Jason. His name is presumably Joshua, but he gives himself the name Jason, adapting Greek cultural names. So there is a group that is very keen on cultural exchange. Fascinating. 